Happy Monday, everybody. Yo. 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 Oh, it's March 21st. We're going to get started with weird things in a minute. You're damn right. Damn right it is March 21st. Welcome back. Welcome back yeah. to March. Yeah. We're, 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 we're rolling through this month. Oh, like fre no fresh, fresh face. Just, just, you know, you know that rest that you can only get uh, waking up at five in the morning and getting on a plane. 5 a.m. Wow. That's a very long flight time. <laughs> but no, I mean, we, was, we were up, up at 5.30. Flight was 8. You got in at 1? Uh, now. <laughs> we drove right from the airport. We, yeah. yeah. That's long. It seems like a long flight time still. Two hours. Well, it's it's two, the, two it, 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 yeah, it, it's the, it's the time change and you know? all that, that. That's what that's what gets you. Mm. Two uh, yeah, two hours. Yeah, I, didn't, I d did not realize that the time had changed last week. Oh, I mean, you, I, you didn't realize I mean, I found that, it, out. that it had sprung ahead. I I found out, but it was you got sprung. I was up that night and I didn't realize <laughs> that every that all of the clocks had jumped forward, and so mm. I thought. Did I black out? Did, uh, what happened? Where did the last hour go? And I didn't even put together that it was daylight. I, I, I did have a similar experience. I was watching some movie. Uh, I'm like, ah, I'm not quite tired yet. And then suddenly I'm like, I'm like, Jesus, it's four in the morning. Huh? I, I am so ignorant about these things and so out of touch. Like, I don't know. I, I only know once I watch the clock jump ahead or my wife tells me. And when it comes to holidays... I know what holiday's coming up because I'll walk through the supermarket and I'll be like, oh, green cupcakes. I like green cupcakes. Very cool. And da, 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 da. Oh! Oh, it was St. Patrick's Day two days ago. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the same thing. That's, That's why they're pushing go. corned beef. <laughs> wow, wow. It's be corn Weird. futures are surging. <laughs> Like the, the, like the yeah the Homer Simpson he made a bunch of money yeah pumpkins you know I'm gonna double down in November. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, are you ready to? Uh, oh well, someone's, someone's chewing a little bit of food, but uh, are you ready to do a podcast? Fellas? Ready, ready. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> um. Yes, uh, everybody. We're patreoncom slash weird things where you can support this. Yeah. And all sorts of other good stuff. Of course, you can use the exclamation mark S command in our chat to suggest episode titles for the podcast we're about to do. Um, and of course, you can subscribe to us here on twitch.tv slash night attack and show your support right where you are. Is that plenty of time? Did I fill enough time for you? And of course, some of our other favorite <laughs> yeah. sister shows like Cord Killers, <laughs> cordkillers.com and Great Night, of course. Watch.greatnight.tv. Uh, check do us out. Do I have out. time to get my water pick? No? Okay. <laughs> that was one chewy piece of bacon good lord that was like the pemmican style i, I, I thought you were eating a like a little pretzel like a hard little snack pretzel i thought why is it taking so no. long to eat that pretzel i get that thick cut bacon a little bit thick uh, i like it crispy and thin mm. i just want to go all right uh everybody ready to do weird things yep ready all right i'm gonna count you in andrew in three two Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Adrian Mange, joined by Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. Justin Robert Young. Yo. And Brian Brushwood. Hey yo. We're all together. So it was about welcome back. About yeah. 20 years ago. About 20 years ago, uh, a young entrepreneur with ambitions of trying to ignite the imaginations of school children around the world went to Russia. And wanted to buy an ICBM mm -hmm. and said, hey, because I want to re turn it into a rocket and be able to send a greenhouse to Mars. And the Russians took him to meeting after meeting, and the people he was paying for advice kept taking money from him. And he realized they were never going to sell it to him, that they were just sort of running this sort of long con on him. And so when he got back onto his airplane and flew back to America, he's like, what if I started my own rocket company? And that man was Bender B. Bennington Rodriguez. He never heard from him. He said, I'm going to make my own rockets <laughs> with blackjack and hookers. <laughs> Forget the rocket. That, <laughs> Forget the that rocket. May, that may come next. That may come next. So, fast forward, fast forward 20 years later, 
here we are where there's a there's what it gets to is that uh a little bit of a thing in Ukraine, if you haven't heard, and the international Was it community, Eurovision? Are they the, doing Eurovision again? Yeah, <laughs> it's a big problem. It's going to be a big problem. The <laughs> West, many Western powers not too happy with Russia, and they've pulled out of things like you know uh, financial support, banking institutions, including also launching things on Russian rockets. Now, the craziest outcome so far is... There is a competitor to Starlink, which was OneWeb. OneWeb is another satellite system to provide internet for the world. And their plan was to launch rockets on Soyuz. Oh, no. So those got canceled. Yeah. Guess who comes in riding the white horse? Oh, man, I would imagine uh, at a, at a, at a uh, fair <laughs> discount as well. <laughs> like, uh, uh, if for no fair th- price, man. Yeah, I don't know. This is, these are, these are last-minute changes. So, uh, <laughs> it's a rush order, really. <laughs> so the, uh, the now OneWeb turns to SpaceX, and there was heated competition, like OneWeb lawsuits, everything in that whole space to try to stop, like, you know, you know, was going on with Starlink, et cetera. I don't know if OneWeb was part of that, but was certainly one of Bezos' companies was doing that. And so now they're using SpaceX. That's funny. And that's like like the ultimate, like 20 years mm-hmm. ago, the Russian space industry created their single biggest competitor and didn't realize it. Uh, so I guess I guess while we're on the topic of, of Ukraine and whatnot, um, how, how, how about the... Uh, Okay, I can't decide. Uh, it's like this awesome superposition. I flip from the Russian cosmonauts joining the ISS wearing uh, uh, blue and yellow being the ballerest move or the safest move. <laughs> because on the one oh. hand, it's a very baller move to, to, to wear colors that seem to indicate your support for the Ukraine. Now, now Brian. But also, you're a bit out of reach. <laughs> now, now, but Brian... Uh, the the Russian Space Federation said that it is a complete coincidence that those flight sheets were yellow <laughs> I, and blue. Oh wait, I have insight. Oh, I actually oh, emailed yeah, yeah. one of my astronaut. I emailed an astronaut friend Ooh. about this because yeah. I saw this. I'm like, and I actually talked to one of my one of the people I work with who's a Russian advisor, and I'm like, what's your take on this? Trying to get the sort of the sense of this, and I have not read it yet. Uh, but there's an, actually an article in Ars Technica that goes into this, but. I do think it was accidental. And I was, I'm like, how was this accidental? Because Rogerson, the guy who heads the Russian space program, and by the way, an actual neo-Nazi from events in his past, um, had gone as far as to remember, I think we talked about putting like covering up white tape over the logos of US and Britain on one of the launches that we had been co-sponsoring. Yeah. Like gone as far as to literally tape over that. And then all yeah, he, of a sudden, he's got he's got a bit of a uh, colorful Twitter history as well. If if uh, oh some my god, of the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Eric Berger has an article. I think I think it's going to be yeah. Um, and his, I think the takeaway is that like it was probably it's coincidence. Um, but you know, there's the mixture like between the astronauts, what they do, where they we don't support. There's what they publicly support, what they are not. And I think it was. I like the idea to think this was an accident. And that Rogers in just looks so bad by it because literally when the New York Times and everybody's running articles like, hey, are they showing their support for the Ukraine? And yeah. can you imagine that phone call between Putin and Rogers in? I don't have to imagine that because I've got them right here on the line. Hey, <laughs> uh, Rogers in. Uh, have problem. Uh, uh, jumpsuits uh, appear to be giant F me in space. What? I, 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 are you sure? <laughs> I, uh, let me let me look again. I, I mean, I, uh, the, uh, no, I is, don't see it. Is blue? Is yellow? No, I, I, think, I uh, don't know if you know who contrast, I am. Contrast, contrast on your monitor. <laughs> Hold turn, on, turn let contrast. Me, uh, let me switch. Uh, uh, flesh tone, warm, uh, wind down. No, all is yellow and blue. <laughs> no, I, I uh, um, yellow represents. Cowardice of Ukraine. <laughs> Blue represents beautiful water of uh, prosperity for Russia. <laughs> okay. I have to go do legitimate uh, 200,000 person rally. I'm going to go use a slur on Twitter. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and one thing that's pointed that out a calendar is item it, for both of them. It seems so prepared. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> The uh, 
they choose kind of super patriots to be these cosmonauts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and so, you know, it, it, you'd like to think, because I kind of think, well, like, they're, a lot of these people, they're, they're a bit more worldly than a lot of other people sometimes have access to, et cetera, but all that. So I don't know. I, I, I'm leaning towards it was an accident and that uh, Rogerson wasn't paying attention, which just makes it would, would just basically be typical what's going on in Russia right now. Yeah, that this is is uh, uh, something that slipped through the cracks. I mean, either way, it's an embarrassment for them. Uh, yeah. But I mean, yeah, that would be that would be that would be a very a ballsy thing. invasion where you get stuck in the mud halfway through in a column. I mean, and, and then uh, the whole world shames you and shuts down your banking, and then all of your oligarchs just sort of yacht on down the road. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's, this is oh. how I'm. This is how I'm going to get all of my global news. Yeah. People who live in glass, glass. People who live in glass compounds shouldn't throw rocks. Right? <laughs> yeah, you uh, know. Yeah, I read. We'll see. I, I one of the most interesting analysis that I read though, and this is very short, was that it, you know because looking at the history of Putin, since his early careers in the KGB, he he ran special ops. Right, he would do special operations in Germany and stuff. Like, he actually, was probably one of the people who was getting red faction to help do terrorist attacks. He's been doing special operations his whole life, not warfare, special operations. Yeah. And even this latest engagement was a special op, which is, oh, we put in our military in a border, we send in our teens, we capture the politicians, we install our puppets, and then we're 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 what we're out and done, you know. And that was his whole. His whole experience was special operations, and this clearly turned into a war. Yeah, and so that sort of kind of you go, oh, okay, I see his mindset, like what his end game was, and then clearly now it's like, what do I do now? <laughs> a lot of a lot of questions of of of, uh. of of what now. I mean, since things seem like they are kind of grinding into a stalemate, and the 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 moves from the Russians are uh, to kind of only get more aggressive uh, specifically with missiles welcome to international relations things where we break well, down all of your international relations well i, I do want to just talk about we have seen it's a very interesting thing to see how technology is played into this mm, and, yeah and we've absolutely. seen yeah you know the the modern you know uh anti-take missile you know man held launcher uh that was sort of designed like those were developed by NATO because they looked at like when Russia had in the Soviet era, the Soviet Union had a humongous tank fleet. And that was like, how do we how do we solve this problem? Like, well, we could put a really powerful rocket in a tube and let somebody just like, like a bazooka, like no, like a guided sort of thing. And so that became a way to take out, you know, $20 million piece of equipment with a thousand dollar piece of equipment. And now we're seeing drones and we're seeing that tactics. I started reading some policy papers by like paid think tanks that completely got this wrong, which is kind of hilarious. And part of it was like, yeah, these are people stuck in like 1999. And it's clearly not. And like, yeah, there's the article about, you know, drone pilots are making a difference. And you could read an article in Wired from like six, seven years ago about like how during one of the previous invasions and how much drones played an impact. And that is, I think a thing we have to think about from a science and technology point of view, warfare is going to be constantly changing now. Yeah. Because the the tactics used before and then we have we have drones okay now we're gonna have anti-drones you know we don't really have a lot of anti-drone drones yet but that's actually an area that's being funded and that's going to be curious like what's going to happen next what's going to happen when you start putting you know the russians got if they're going to take you know the latest city they got to go put people on the ground but you know are we going to start getting drones with nine millimeter guns on them so you could just send a fleet of those into the city to take out like it's well, just... and, and even then there's going to be so many limitations uh by the way if you've not seen the photo of it the the switchblade kamikaze drones that um i guess were developed in the united states and in deployed in afghanistan for a little bit are being supplied um uh cheaper than a rpg basically you, you launch it from a tube the blades of the uh, uh, the spinner parts are literal sharpened blades that just you know whip out, and then uh, oh and then they, they explode upon impact. <laughs> it lo- it looks like the barrel of a Glock without with just no handle, and it does have wings. <laughs> That's yeah. Wow. There are a few different versions of the switchblade too, and I I don't know enough about any of them. But yeah, you see, I watched a video where they showed this thing like just taking out you know because the thing it goes up. 
And then it decides where its target is. Correct. And you can control it and it's say, after oh, it's go here, deployed, go here. It hovers, and then you, on the display, you're like, mm, this one. And this guy. Yeah. That's the end of that. <laughs> it, yeah, just, yeah. It, it sounds like a very advanced missile. <laughs> It, it it barely even like yeah it looks like a drone and it sounds like it operates like a drone but it does sound like on paper it's a very highly guided missile uh yeah. very and patient remember, slow walking missile uh michael Crichton, remember the movie runaway right and he wrote a very interesting screenplay and story about like what's going to be the future like with robotics and this is a movie that came out like 1984 and I think, and Gene Simmons played the bad guy. Oh, and I think oh one of this is the one had, with the little spider bots, right? Spider bots. And, and, and Tom, I think Tom he had Selleck, I think, is in it. Yep, Tom Selleck was the lead. And I think they had a bullet that could go around corners. Yes. And so, because uh, they had like these kind of cool, yeah, uh, let's see if they have that um, runaway. Uh, I'm just looking that up. But that was a thing like, you know, Michael Crichton, like you go back and you read old Crichton, it's like there's nothing that's happened that Michael Crichton didn't see happening. <laughs> in my opinion. Um, you know, it's like that there's this sound up in the Westworld movie, the original movie, right? Where they're talking about they're going through the control room of the lab where they're building the robots and somebody's like, can like, I don't even know how they work. Like these things, they started designing themselves. So we don't know what's going on. And it was like the whole idea of machines designing machines. Yeah. And what happens? And that's, well, you get Yule Brenner on a rampage. We know this now. <laughs> we so, now know. It is known. Uh, so scary times, scary times. Uh, there is an article in Wired Magazine, an interview with Palmer Lucky, who was the creator of the Oculus, and then he got pushed out of that. Um, and then he went into building, uh, became a defense contractor, building defensive weapons and stuff. And <laughs> now... Oh, uh, 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 Justin was sharing the story with me over the weekend, and what what was the phrase you said? We want to. <laughs> oh yeah, well he he was talking. Wait, is it Anduin? Is is a a, a new company? Andrew, yeah. Andrew, sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, that is a drone technology that has secured massive defense contracts, including like a billion dollar one very recently. Uh, and and his his rallying cry to his team from the very beginning has been that we are going to save the American taxpayer hundreds of billions of dollars by making tens of billions of dollars in this company. <laughs> uh, and uh, 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 yeah, so far, I mean, he was even cagey during the interview about whether or not his technology is currently in use in Ukraine. They well, like can't say one way or the other if it is involved in Ukraine. Yeah, they like they asked him about it, and yeah, th that was exactly his his response. So, I mean, if it's not now, one might imagine that conflicts like this will uh, will not be without it going forward. Yeah, they've been building. They have some cool demos of like anti drone drones, etc., and like just very interesting tech and like drone platforms easy to do. And like other industries. I have a feeling that what we're paying for a lot of this technology is way more than we really need to. And, but also it is scary. Let's, let's get back to this. It is. These are things that in, in theory, we call them defensive because nobody wants to be offensive. We don't have war departments. We have defense departments now, which nice phrasing, but really <laughs> nice accurate. new speak. No. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so yeah. Uh, fascinating. And then you think about it and it's scary. Yeah. Well, you want to know but you what... know it's not scary. Exactly. We want to know it's just fascinating. <laughs> what? Uh, the fact that you can support us at patreon.com slash weird things. Oh, friends. my God. This is fascinating. Will you tell me more? I will. Go Patreon. on. Patreon.com slash weird things is where you can go and make sure that we stay loud, live, and independent each and every Tuesday. That even when uh, two of us are rolling right off a plane, we come right here and explain the world of the weird. You also get access to our After Things podcast which is a, a look into the worlds of creative professionals, answering your questions and telling our own stories. There's only one place that you can do all this, friends, and that is patreon.com slash weird things. That is so interesting. Can you tell me more? No. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done telling you. I've told you, and we are done. We are done telling. It's over. Done. No more. So how about this for a story? Uh, uh, on March 11th, astronomer Christian Sarnizekshi noticed an 
asteroid at the uh, Piazek, I can't remember, observatory, uh, Piazekestio <laughs> observatory. It's got all those weird symbols above the letters, and I can't even say the word. Um, um, uh, I don't think that they're weird at all. Observatory. <laughs> and uh, basically, they, they spotted this object, and they realized, that, man, uh, it's coming. It's in a collision course with Earth. With our this? Earth? This Earth. E A R T H. Yes, R R no, Earth two six one. No. R R. <laughs> this is the episode where Bryce finds out that there's another Earth that with a slightly nicer <laughs> Starbucks but crappier Denny's. <laughs> so I was just shocked because no one else. <laughs> They're always on the other side of the sun, so we never see them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Earth two. Hold on, this is this is actually a great idea. <laughs> so this is part of this is part of NASA's scout system, which is designed to look for objects. So thankfully, it worked. Unfortunately, false. Positive. We only had two hours. No, we had two hours notice, oh. and it was. But fortunately, it was a refrigerator sized asteroid and so okay, they so. knew where it was gonna hit whatever but like hey asteroid oh do i what no no you know yeah. and so we had two we had two hours notice i don't know if you guys realize that you know the the end of the world well was only you know that big i guess this is the fifth time this has happened i mean where I, they, like, I, I, think I, can, I think i can uh, uh get her done in two hours yeah this, this is the fifth time get her done as in wrap up notice. your yeah. life no i mean have one more orgasm <laughs> before i die <laughs> i mean I why, why would you thing. need why, to call Justin? that out why did you like, why like did what, you was that was that, that not was that not like included in wrapping up your life was that not yeah. a broad enough thing I mean, what else is I, there I, no I i'm gonna be you, honest Justin. i'm on brian's side there was a lot of subtext that you should have read into yeah i blame you justin you should never all right. All right. What are you gonna do with the last two hours of your life? What do you think no. I'm gonna do? I'm, gonna be, I'm Spider Man over here. What is wrong oh, with you? Geez. This show. <laughs> this show. Um, this show. <laughs> Spider Man. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So did we? Uh, so, did, did I don't we know. Survive? Call your parents. Maybe <laughs> that would be a thing to do in the final two hours. <laughs> You cretins! So uh, uh, the fact, uh, uh, quest, question, Andrew, uh, is the fact that it's a, a refrigerator sized. It, it, is that like the the difficulty multiplier? Like like two hours is a short window, and if it was the size of Manhattan and we only had two hours, we would have a problem. But but for yeah. something so small, um, uh, is that a testament to how well it's working? Uh, possibly. I I I I think that it's not a. They're like, well, yeah, it's a small object, and it's going to take. Yeah, to, it's it has to probably get that close for it to be aware to see it. And to your point, that needs to be bigger ones will probably be spotted further away. It is just sort of funny, like ah, well, this thing's two hours out, and we know it's going to hit over Norway. That's kind of cool. Uh, man, how annoyed! Imagine being the president, and it's like just the door kicks in, and you're in the presidential bedroom, and it's like, sir, do you want the good news or the bad news? And you're. Like, and just like, God damn it. Yeah, yeah. How many times have we talked about this? We don't play this game. <laughs> yeah. Just tell me. I'm the president of yeah. the free world. I don't... <laughs> right. <laughs> just the, yeah. whatever the so... most important of the two. Well, I don't know. They come in different flavors, sir. We'll do an inverted pyramid workshop next week. But for right now, it's just the most important thing. Well, how would you describe so... your mental makeup? <laughs> All right, <go> ahead. <laughs> the best was like the Daily Mail when they reported it. They called it. They said half giraffe sized Asteroid hits Earth. Giraffe sized. <laughs> you know, That's so much better than refrigerator. Like, you know, credit to them because I, like, I saw that and did not know that this was that story. <laughs> I like. I want to go to Best Buy and it's like, uh, hey man, I got a lot of stuff. I have to keep it cold. And they're like, well, how big of a, a freezer or refrigerator would you like? I'm like, I'm thinking uh, uh, half a giraffe. giraffe. <laughs> All right, please leave. Yeah, it's a ridiculous Mr. thing. Mr. President. <laughs> yeah, Mr. President, get the hell out of here. I mean, I, I I guess I'm all for different units of measure to make you think that's relevant. Like somebody else said, oh, the size of a grand piano. I'm like, okay, that's cool. But like <laughs> half of a giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I love, I would love to see a... Uh, a and a, half. I would love to see a a, a, a splinter uh, faction of, of psychology that only dissects like, you know, what metaphors people use. You're like, oh, I don't know. It's about like 
two thirds of a Ford Fiero. Okay, wait, hold on now. <laughs> Let's go around the table. How tall is an average giraffe? Oh. If we're gonna go half a giraffe, how tall is an average giraffe? Uh, an average adult giraffe? An average adult giraffe. Thirteen. Thirteen feet. You're gonna say yeah. thirteen feet. feet. I'm, I'm gonna say t- twenty. No, uh, seventeen feet. Seventeen feet. Say seventeen. Maine. Hardy looked it up. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, what do you think? I think it is fifteen feet. You think it's fifteen? Right in the middle. Ding I'm ding gonna, ding, Bryce. I'm gonna, I'm gonna what? Right. Really? Seventeen? Uh, wow. Uh, and so half of that is. Oh, now we've hit the hard part. <laughs> eight, and, eight and a half feet. Okay, eight and a half. Okay, I, I look. So that's a that's one what? NBA big man, super amazing, awesome pick on high heels with a top hat, yes. sized asteroid. Exactly. It is Shaq on a unicycle sized asteroid. <laughs> It's a box containing 30,000 rulers. What? That doesn't... <laughs> what size box? I wonder... Yeah. Uh, uh, obviously, I mean, who knows how much the headline writing these days is done to generate clicks uh, uh, as, as opposed to immediately inform. But uh, how fascinating must that be? Like, how does the call, the chain of command go <laughs> when NASA discovers the asteroid? And then, like, did they... How fastly does the president of Iceland get word that there is an asteroid going to hit their territory within the next two hours? Like, how fast does that all happen? Does NASA go I right think, to the president of Iceland? Uh, no, I think there's a person, a science, somebody who decides whether or not to tell them or not. You know, the one that's also looking for kids with mutant powers. Because I, yeah. I think if if they know that it's that size, then I think they would know that it would burn up almost certainly. I mean, similarly, like if, if like there was a economic crisis, you would call, you know, one of the top economists first, not directly the president. What? Yeah, Justin, why didn't you do that? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, but but, no, sure. But let's, (laughs) and and so uh, that's what I'm saying is that like, how many lines does it go? So the person who discovers it It, at NASA, then we discuss it with the state department. The state department calls, I don't Somebody even think they call the, it. I think, or is it science uh, network to science network? So. Yeah, I think NASA calls Iceland NASA. Ice, ice NASA? Nassie. Right. Yeah. And, uh, Icy. Nassie. Icy. <laughs> Isa. <laughs> the Icelandic Celestial I, Organization. The ISJ? I, I like to imagine that every administration has, like, some man or woman whose job is, like, when the... The president just read an article about ghosts. We need you to explain to him that ghosts are real. Yeah. <laughs> but you know I have a master's degree, right? Yeah, I know. You just <laughs> like does does that get a wake up of the president? Let's say the president was asleep while this is happening. Like, does does that get a wake up? Not a half a giraffe. A full giraffe. Full giraffe. <laughs> full giraffe would wake you think, up. You no, think... I don't if there's no you know, at the beginning, there's somebody has to decide the threats and stuff, and there's that person, but I also like I think, like, yeah, they're like not but gonna because, like, there's the now. So, do but, they but, tell but, him? But a giraffe would burn up on entry, right? Like, it wouldn't even hit. I mean, how would it get into space? Wearing... Bigger than a half of a giraffe? Ain't, oh, I mean, there's uh, ain't no air in space. Yeah, there's an air in space museum. Mm-hmm. Fire comes at you. There's an space. air in giraffe. I just kind of hung up on now on that idea, though, of like. <laughs> The president watched this documentary. We need you to explain yeah. that this monster's not real. Because, <laughs> like, I, if you look at like some of the things our presidents have said, like, like that was like Bill Clinton was disappointed they would. Oh, uh oh. Which? Oh, sorry. Oh. We 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 heard Bill Clinton. Uh, oh. get... He was yeah. He was disappointed. Dot dot dot. That about he went to ask. I guess one of the first questions he asked was, "Are there aliens? Can I see them?" <laughs> <laughs> Take me to Area Fifty One. You know, I feel like I've heard that story, and I never heard of if he actually saw aliens or not. Hmm. Uh, all right, sorry, we're getting. One second, everybody. Oh, here we go. Sorry. We're back. So he's gonna go on one second. Okay. Sorry about that, everybody. We'll give it one second, and hopefully we'll get right back in action. 
All right. Hello. Sorry about that, Andrew. We've, we flipped the thing, and I think we should be back now. Okay, cool. I changed my network, too, so it might be on me. Okay. Cool. Um, uh, but yeah, so yeah, that was the that Bill Clinton when he came into office and asked, I think, what was what was on a lot of our minds as he asked about Area 51 and aliens. Like, can I, like no, there's no aliens. <laughs> That's what he said that they said. Yeah. And really, he yeah. was... He, uh, see, that's the problem, is you can't just ask, you know, about aliens, and you can't even ask about Area 51. What you do is you say, let's take uh, old Air Force One for a test drive. And we're like, where are we going? <laughs> uh, L.A. Let's say L.A. And then, you know, you get, you, you, you're peeking out the window the whole time, and you're like, Mr. President, you're like, I'm just looking at shrubberies. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then just out of nowhere, you're like, there, land there. Now, Emergency now. landing. Yeah. <laughs> down, down, down. <laughs> and he's, Sir, that's one of our bases. That's... You're like, good. <laughs> Which one? Uh, that's Area 51. Aha! I mean, Surprise I mean, check. I suppose it'll do. Uh, and then you go and you immediately run to like the lowest man on the totem pole. You don't you don't let any generals talk you into an official tour or something. So the president like, is frantically finding the guy at the guard booth. <laughs> right. Yeah, you're like, I need Beetle Bailey's right now. Now <laughs> is, is there is there is there a McDonald's on base? Excellent, you'll do. Uh, 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 Gertrude, uh, where are they at? <laughs> and she's like uh, the 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 fries. Fry later, it's back here. <laughs> yeah. Right. Sure, we'll call them fries. <laughs> <laughs> fries were invented in the. Six? Yeah, President, we uh, 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 we have to get back inaugurations in five hours. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm doing a thing. The fifties or the sixties or the four? <laughs> I'd like them Roswell flavored fries if you catch my drift. <laughs> can I get them alien style, please? Can I get can I get some extraterrestrial alien sauce? Alien style. It's good. That's a good double entendre, <laughs> President, president. <laughs> Mr. President. <laughs> I've told you about seeing, you know, they have their own, uh, Area 51 has their own small little flight of air, or a fleet of airplanes of like that fly crew staff to there. Oh, yeah. They, so if you f they go like from Area 51 to Las Vegas a lot. Yeah, I did. I did that. I did that Las Vegas helicopter tour, and you go out to the runway to get in the helicopter. And I look over, and I see these airplanes that all they have is like this red stripe along the side of them, and now they're markings of them, like tail markings. And I'm like, that's weird. Like it's not like a real airline. And then I remember, like, oh, that's that. And then I looked yeah. it up, and that was it. It's Janet Airlines is what it's nicknamed. Ooh, that's amazing. That's, that's, funny. that's a real thing. Wow. That's also the airplane where people who go out to go spot UFOs, you know, at Area 51, those airplanes will come in like in the morning to like bring in crew, like the land. Yeah. Like, oh, look, UFO, UFO. It's like, okay. No, nah, that's Janet. Yeah. I like uh, any well, Wikipedia. That's what they want you to think. I like any yeah. Wikipedia page that starts with blank is the unofficial name given to a highly classified fleet of passenger <laughs> aircraft. And then the page is like a thousand pages longer than this. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Does a lot of information about these classified aerospace machines. Yeah. Still not enough. No, nope. <laughs> no. Wikipedia uh, needs to cut off picks? Russia. <laughs> yeah. I got a pick. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a hot new Disney plus, uh, uh, TV show. Mm. It's... Hey, hold on. My problem with Disney Plus is I'm tired of the talent on Disney Plus. I want fresh young talent. And... Yeah. I mean, you're right. Mm. It's a bunch of old hands, like 15, 16, 17 year olds. <laughs> However old I, they I, were. I want fresh talent, like 12 year olds. And I want them learning magic. And I want them, like, I, I, I wrote a letter to Disney. Just once, can you have a TV show that features my daughter <laughs> learning magic in my backyard? Uh, I'll even provide you with all the footage. And lo and behold, I Wonder is now a new uh, uh, Disney Plus uh, original. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, I, I believe in just over half of these episodes were a segment, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, 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 Bryce. Uh, I was so stoked. I... I uh, when I got the text message about it, uh, a I was surprised because it aired on Disney XD last year. <laughs> yep, <laughs> we missed that. Uh, but then I was just scrubbing through, and they, you know what? Like we we put a lot of work into those videos, and we've been putting them out for a long time. And they, 
you know, they do their own edits a little bit, but they they're pretty good. They're very good, and uh, I was I was I was very happy. It, it, it does right by the magic. It mm-hmm. does right by the relationship and the story. It's it, I mean, it, it is exactly what it looks like a, a dad and his daughter during a pandemic learning magic together. Um, but man, oh man, uh, let me let me just spoil the ending. Uh, they had us record an interview of ourselves, and uh, we uh, uh, we might have flashed the most epic of Diamond Club signs uh, <laughs> that is now part of the, the Disney canon. Yeah, it's it's like the very last thing that happens in the very last episode of the season, and it was and, oh, it's so good. They even like do a little graphic little, on little, it, little, little animation, yeah. Yeah. little little lightning bolt, uh, diamond powers. Oh, it's so good. And the rest of the stuff is like really is really interesting on there. I wonder. It's like some magic stuff. It's like visual visual effects and and like you know like transition like those TikTok transitions and trick shots. Like the slow mo guys are on there. They got Shin Lim on there. Yep. for a couple of segments like it's it, it seems very cool uh the uh uh my favorite part uh <laughs> did not happen on the show but rather happened you know like like josie josie was a good sport you know hey pandemic's happening i gotta teach magic to somebody she's like yeah whatever fine dad i'm like i'm gonna put it on the youtube fine yeah that's fine dad and it's like i'm gonna put it on <laughs> the disney the and, and she's like I guess fine, and then uh, and then I ha- I called her the uh, last week, and I'm like, hey, so remember that stuff? It's now on Disney Plus, and she's like, uh huh, and I'm like, you're sort of the show's thumbnail, <laughs> and she just hung up on me, and, and, and she just, <laughs> I just hear beep beep beep, <laughs> and then and then I get a text saying I am broken, <laughs> and, and then when I called her back, she she seemed very upset, I'm like, are these for real tears, what's happening, she goes, I don't know dad, it's just a lot, <laughs> I, I, I could have, I was very overwhelmed, and I'm not in it. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I was, I was like going off the wall about it. I'm not in one frame of this. So. Oh, can I? Yeah. Can I? But can it, I it's, just, it's good. She like looks good on it. They, yes. Like, yes. Yeah. You, I want. I want to frame things right now. Okay. Hey man, I didn't do right it. Now, <laughs> <be framed. laughs> right now on Disney Plus. Disney Plus, a, a premium platform now, a jewel of the Disney crown, and Disney, a, a, a platform that is known for its quality, and its quality, and the idea of the quality from the content, the production quality, everything else about that. It is, it is very much held to a very high standard in what they try to do and what they do and present from family audiences, etc. Stuff you made is that good. Stuff you guys made is that good, and, 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 and you're you know you're that talented. Your daughter's that talented. You're at that level. We're out of your effing backyard. Well, it's a compound. You're making stuff this good. A, a tip of the hat to Bryce because uh, I I'll I'll double down on that by by expressing that not only uh, does it belong on that show, but I would say that ours is some of the more outstanding visual. It, it looks I'm, like the grown-up in the room. Yeah. I we'll mean, say this. We'll say it's the best stuff on there. Yeah. yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it's, it's, many are saying. You don't have to many say are it. saying. People, many are, people saying. are saying. People are saying more and more. <laughs> and when we get these we get these blockers in our head, this limitation, like, because, like, I went with, you know, my, my tiny version, which ain't no Disney Plus version, like, a very clear was, like, I want to write books. Like, we well, should be, you know, we'll get published. I'm like, well, what if I self-publish? Well, is that as good as being published? Well, it turns out, Self published stuff ends up getting published. You st- if it's good, it can be good enough there. It can sometimes work its way up here. And you guys were making, you already making pro content. You've already been supporting yourself by this. But it was also, what was the difference between something that you produced with you and Bryce and your instincts and your family and something made by Disney? Literally the letters D I S N E Y stamped on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and like even, even little stuff like, I, I don't know. I, 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 I I, maybe I overthink this too much, but I was very glad that like at the start of those segments, like it says featuring Scam Nation on it, like it, like because it's I, I you know I imagine if you're if you're in the TV pipeline, it's very tough for anyone to say, hey, shout out our YouTube channel on TV, like no one's ever gonna do that, right? But, uh, so seeing seeing that get in there also is is was very 
exciting because we didn't i don't know we didn't get much of that with like the scam school tv pilots and stuff but uh yeah i don't know i'm excited it's very no, cool. it's, it's very very validating very exciting uh, uh very cool it's called i wonder e-y-e mm-hmm. uh i and have that, a big uh, sorry andrew go ahead that should be a bio i mean disney plus i wonder featured yeah. in you know that's yeah absolutely and baby yoda uh, I have another Disney Plus pick. I watched it on the flight and then finished it on Disney Plus. Encanto. Ooh. The animated film Encanto. I would have seen this movie earlier if they had correctly marketed it as Hispanic X-Men do Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they didn't, so it took this long. It's enjoyable. The music's really good. I feel like it was. It's destined to be a a physical musical uh, that will do very well, but uh, enjoyable. Fun time. Did, did you watch Coco? How do you feel? Like maybe it's unfair to compare it to Coco. I've not seen Coco, so oh, I would oh. have to watch Coco. Coco's but very good. Uh, uh, this is a musical, like capital M oh. musical, like where they're they're getting from song to song. Uh, uh, each character has a song. Like they are all singing at, at, at all times and everything is kind of hung on, on them getting from, from one to another. So uh, I would say if that would probably be the biggest comparison between another, just, you know, a, a animated drama. Mm, nice. I, I keep hearing it's great. Uh, and I just haven't seen, I can, I don't, I don't, I, I like Coco cause it's not a musical. Coco's just got a lot of good music in it. Um, yeah, this is, but, I mean, look. It, but I hear it's great. And it, it's, it's like Lin-Manuel Miranda doing the it, music, right? It, it very much feels like, <laughs> like I mean, it was, there, there, are, there are certain themes for which he, he, he very much likes. Hey, everybody, I'm Bruno. I'm the guy whose <laughs> name is Bruno. Uh, In my head, he's also MC Hammer. He's, yeah, it, it mostly MC Hammer's performance as Bruno <laughs> is a standout. Uh, very cool. Um, uh, I've got a pick. Um F1 is back, baby. Uh, Formula One was very cool this weekend. Uh, uh, they, the cars are new. The engines are new. Uh, all of the car bodies are shaped differently, so they all look different, and everyone is trying to do different things. And it means that the, the way that the teams had been kind of ordered the past six years or so is totally shaken up. Like, Ferrari won... Uh, first and second place over the weekend and that hasn't happened in a very long time so it's it's very cool uh formula one uh back I, it's back baby um and the f1 tv app is is good you can just pay them a very small amount of money and watch the races so yeah Andrew, you're gonna pick? i'm gonna make a wild crazy pick here okay. um there is a platform it's like magic in in you know novels and movies and fantasy, when you use magic, magic yield, yielded right can be great. Magic yielded poorly can be destructive. And you see that it's like it's, it's like ancients were making a metaphor for today and technology, or a metaphor for technology of their current era. But it doesn't matter. Point is, uh, I love Twitter. Like I have a great experience on Twitter. One of the things I do is I use lists on Twitter to sort of follow things. I have friends and stuff that I love and care about, but I don't necessarily will always want to hear their hot takes on stuff because then I think, man, they're idiots. So mm. I, I like to use lists and I'll do lists of like, you know, for, for you know, going on like current and like geopolitics stuff of people who I don't know, but are really seem to have very good insights that make me think. And I have a very positive experience. And it's funny because I talk to somebody like, ah, I hate Twitter. Ah. I'm like, I love Twitter. Like, like I don't, the key is to not take that pipeline and just to mainline it straight. The key is to filter. The key is to say, what do I want to deal with? Maybe I want to go deal with my friends and crazy people I know, sort of hot takes on stuff. Or maybe I just want to be connected to some of the smartest people in the world and hear what they have to say, who maybe disagree, but are going to make me think about different things. So Twitter lists, that's my pick. Create a list on Twitter, hmm. and you will all of a sudden realize that you can have a much more positive experience on it. And so. you, you, you don't experience the emotional baggage that comes from, ooh, am I going to unfollow? You know, because following unfollowing is a public act of, you know, support or, or you know, rebuke or whatever. Whereas a list is just like, uh, yeah, this person constantly complaining about the so-and-so. Good on them. I like them. 
just not going to read that, you know? Uh, I, I have <clears throat> found that uh, uh, use the mute feature. Uh, uh, if, if lists are not your thing, if you don't want to build a list from scratch, like whatever. The, the mute feature, uh, sometimes, people get, sometimes people get put in timeout for a little while, and they don't need to know that. Uh, you know, I, I think another positive to the list is that, you know, Twitter has pushed more and more to create an algorithm based mm -hmm. version of your timeline, which will always be uh, biased toward the most engagement. The most engagement often comes from the most divisive content. But if you have a list and it is all stuff that you generally enjoy, then the algorithm is serving you more than uh, uh, just the general the general feed of everybody that you're following. Yeah, there's a, uh, uh, and you can make lists public or private. Um, uh, uh, I, I have a private list uh, just titled homepage, which is uh, I put people on it when I'm like, uh, maybe there are people that I don't even follow them and they don't follow me. But for whatever reason, at some point, I make the choice of the things this person are, are saying belong in my brain and and then i make that decision and and i see what they say or whatever um now the wrong way to do it is to get mixed up about public and private lists for example uh, uh our friend Andrew heaton has a wonderful story in which he assembled a list called uh people i need to unfollow not realizing <laughs> it was a public list <laughs> and that everybody was getting Andrew notified Heaton has added you to a list yes people, people i need, I to, need unfollow. to unfollow and then he had to have a lot of very awkward conversations See, he should have changed the name of the list of like funny joke i played on my friends yeah and then made lol it. gotcha yeah. he should have called me i wouldn't figure that out for it's, you know next time call bryce you ever in a sticky jam bryce will fix it <laughs> boy wonder Boy wonder little Bryce. Bryce. <laughs> little, little Bryce goes a long way. <laughs> uh, yeah, Twitter lists. And yeah, if, uh, another thing, is some some of the Twitter apps are not easy to get to lists, but usually when you look at the list, uh, yeah, it's usually chronological and it usually doesn't have ads in it. Um, that, in, that's certainly in, been my experience on TweetDeck specifically. Uh, but I, 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 I think even the like the official app and stuff. Yeah. Uh, at least in, it used to be. Maybe it's different now, but. Very cool. Twitter lists. Nice. Nice. Gentlemen. Yep. It's been weird. Yeah. 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 Oh. Wow. Oh. That's a ghost. Oh, that's a ghost. Oh, get me my advisor. I think we got ghosts are real. I'm going to put my state of union. Oh, it's no. going to be this ghost. Bryce, explain to the president again that it's just Brian's gonna, killing sorry. time. It's going to be my policy. <laughs> There's a thing called Twitch, and they don't let you just like turn it off. You, yeah. just, you have to keep, make, hold a gap. <laughs> So sometimes scaring the president some you know some podcasters they do like a, a drag like a vampire voice because you have to vamp yeah uh, but this is a ghost um because the Vam show has vampire died. what the what oh, no <laughs> all right we're gonna take a second and, uh, meanwhile go. half of congress he's on to us <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. That's how they find all that hot air. Um, uh, all right, everybody. So uh, that's uh, that's weird things. We'll come back with after things in just a minute. Uh, if you need to take a break, get a drink, use the restroom. Now's the time to do it. Hello, everybody. Oh, cool. Thank you. I will. Go for it. Yeah. What's up? Hey, Justin. What's up, dude? <sighs> the video games happened over the weekend. How many? Well. One than one less than I was there the day before. Oh no! The uh, so I'm playing Gran Turismo and I got stuck. If you read, if you follow gaming news, it was a thing. Gran Turismo was just inaccessible. Inaccessible, like yeah. Thirty hours. Oh wow. Uh, yeah, no, because I remember when it shut down, you were you were you were affected immediately <laughs> because that it had been shut down. Mm. I'd stay I'd stayed up because it was supposed to just be a short like it was supposed to be a short break. It was yeah. starting late at night, which is about when I go to bed. Am I, I blurry? Am I having a stroke? Uh, no, you're blurry. Um, it's that camera. The camera's on uh, auto focus. Oh, oh was, okay. Is it like a? Yeah, it'll it'll fix itself in a yeah. It should fix itself. Okay. Um, uh, 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 but, yeah. Uh, uh, so so Turismo was out, 
So what? What was in? What? What did you tag in? The Elden Ring? No, I'm. All the kids love the Elden Ring. They do. I'm very. I don't. I don't know about Elden Ring. I'm. I don't. I'm not good at those types of games. I'm good at the driving game where you just yeah. drive. I'm yeah. not good at the game where you. Well, have this to is. So I don't know. I don't know Jack about about ass uh, when it comes to Elden Ring, but it, it is of the Dark Souls genre, or is it a direct successor to Dark Souls? Uh, it is. Uh, um, it's in the family. It's a. It's a. It's a cousin once removed. It's the same people. Plus okay. George R. R. Martin, but it is a different series. Gotcha. But it's and, basically and the whole game. bit with that is that it's very hard. It's, it is, diff you, it is very particular. I think. Uh, I think you would get people who are good at it who say, when it you just it it is not intuitive to the way you would play an action game. It's not just run up and smash, 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 smash. You've like, got to learn things and figure things out, and it is unforgiving with, yeah. with like it's not going to hold your hand. To get you there, you're gonna you're gonna have to run your head against the wall, but but that's the point. The point is that when you solve it, you'll feel very good. Yeah, and uh, you know I've heard it's it's more accessible than previous games have been, um, but I just I don't I have a tough time with games like that where uh, you have to keep bumping up against failure. I just don't like failing. That's why I like Gran Turismo. I think is because when even when you have a slow lap, you just you get another lap. They're just like just hey, go again. Dri keep driving. Yeah. That's what they tell you every couple of Keep days. driving. Keep driving. Yeah. You're still driving. Like, good job. Or if it's not a good job, it's just keep driving. Keep dri <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was that. Was that. And then I, I don't think I've had a... I, I, am, I am out of... Wait, a, sorry. I don't I don't remember uh, uh, what, what, what you replaced Turismo with. Oh, um, I, I think I d didn't. I think I was just upset for a whole day. Did you just leave your house? I... And I uh, what did I play? Because I'm I know I must have done something. There was uh, hmm. When was that? That oh you know hmm yeah I don't I don't know what I what I did. I think I just watched YouTube and stuff instead. Uh, but you know very frustrating because I you know I don't want to do the online stuff. I wanted to just do races. But yeah, that's that's. But here you go. That's how it is. Here you are. Here's your All sign. Right, I'm gonna hit the bathroom and then we'll get ready to roll. Okay. And I pull up uh, the email that we got. Oh, here we go. Hey, Brian. Uh, Click. There we go. Uh, it was really fun to see, uh, to read your palpable excitement about the I wonder stuff. Like uh, that. That was that was that made me happy. Good. I was. I was. And so. Yeah. Okay. Go. Yeah, I, I, I will be there to remind you, Brian, when you fail and laugh at you and point at your bloody nose on the sidewalk and just look at your tied shoelaces and no, but I will also be there. More importantly, I'm going to, I want, we need to be reminded of stuff like, like that's amazing. It's amazing. You guys, you guys. You idiots made content for Disney Plus. Well, and, and and more Your more importantly, daughter. we did it. We did it. Uh, uh, we weren't even trying by accident <laughs> to just cover our butts during a global catastrophe. <laughs> like we got to do something, and then the thing that we did just happened to. I mean, and and it just, I, um, part of me gets a little bit frustrated because so many young people getting started, and maybe we can talk about this in After Things, is they think, well, I'll just make something that's good and the universe will find a way for it to find, you know, popularity. And and I, I hate that advice because it's impractical and, you know, you have to iterate and you have to hustle and all of that stuff. But this is a case of, we just went to the backyard and made some stuff that was pretty good. And the universe found its way to <laughs> putting it on Disney yeah, Plus. You, you <laughs> You made something that was really good based upon you having two decades of experience of Correct. knowing. It's like, I just wrote some words and the joke took over the internet. Like, well, you're a gifted comedian and you know how to write funny things. Right, you know? exactly. So, yeah. So, yeah, I I am um, Disney Plus, man. <laughs> yeah. Plus. Uh, and, and on top and of that, it, it, it looks like internationally... Hacking the system is showing up on the Nat Geo vertical of Disney Plus. Hmm. Um, it hasn't come domestically to the U.S. yet, so that'd be fun to have 
two shows right? on Disney Plus. <laughs> Disney personality Brian <laughs> was caught today on Twitter making an inappropriate <laughs> list. <laughs> he made a list saying real pieces of work. These <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that'd be that'd be fun to, to, to just do antiquated, antiquated like uh, of people uh, uh, cockroaches that need to be rubbed out. Yeah, <laughs> certified crumb bums. Uh, I I, th- I say it for next week, but next week I'd love to talk about it. And I don't know if you've had a chance to see it, Brian. I put a did a WordPress post about all of the. Uh, Natural language to code experiments. Oh, yeah. Ooh, oh, no, I would very a... much. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely read okay. it. Yeah. Um, everything's scary now. It was basically using the new, I used the new OpenAI model to make things like Wordle and oh, Middle uh, Legend of Zelda. Yeah. Uh, speaking mm-hmm. of which, um, uh, I think my, my credentials may have expired for the beta. Um, on GPT 3. Yeah. No, there shouldn't. You might need to. There, you get X amount of tokens, and then you have to like renew. Maybe put it in a credit card or something. But let me know if you if you okay. if you're no longer okay. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah, I didn't want to bug you, but uh, like like yeah. If, if you if, actually, what you can do now, by the way, is like literally just go through and re reapply, and it's it's we 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 uh, people get accepted right away. Okay, oh. cool, cool. I should try that because yeah. I think when. I think I never got access to that, and I would like to play with it. Uh, sorry. Sorry. No, no, no. It's not your fault. It was It was mostly a personal judgment on you and your values <laughs> no. from Andrew. God, I want yeah. to see what happens. It was nothing personal, but it was a judgment about you <laughs> and everything you've done and just, will do. Just Projections. It, really. wasn't it didn't work. Personal didn't on for my help. part. No, it was no. Just you. It's just, it's just purely yeah. my own judgment. It wasn't him. It was you. <laughs> You are a failure. Okay, because please do the show. Unworthy. Hey, hey. that's yeah, what he that checked thing? in the box ready, ready, of why he wasn't things? giving you. Okay. All right, we're gonna start after things. In three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello, Mr. Brian, Disney Plus star Rushwood. Yo, who did, did we send out a memo that it's Hat Day? I think we just all oh, wear hats now. Oh, I think yeah. all of us we're are just hat men. <laughs> we were the hat man. And, and, uh, and, and Mr. Looks like a hat with a mullet right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Disney Plus producer, <laughs> Bryce Castillo. The guy at the store said I was the only one who could pull this look off. <laughs> <laughs> you are. I mean, listen, I love your Eastbound and Down cosplay. It's great. <laughs> it's, and, uh, that's the second time I've heard that, uh, that, that, that that reference uh, because we were hanging out uh, at the blackjack table with uh, Jacob from uh, Ice Cream mm-hmm. Social who has, has the <laughs> same look. He has, he had the hat on and, and the hair down. <laughs> We've got the audio engineer look <laughs> uh, uh, Andrew uh, I believe we, we got an email we have an email well let me read this email yes or would you like this to is it? from dear citizens oh, it yeah. is me the president I am right. terrified of ghosts and vampires <laughs> we'll investigate area 51 immediately stop <laughs> sir this is not a telegram stop. <laughs> stop why did I put that in the telegram stop, stop. So we Bryce, got, go for it. So we got an email from uh, David Potts, who's written in many times before. David writes, "Hello, after things, long time e- emailer here. I've written in every year or so, going back to 2017. Wow, yikes! When I first asked for tips about growing my YouTube channel, where I make guitar lessons. If uh, oh, oh yeah, I, I, do, remember I do remember this. Yeah, this. yeah, yeah. I think we we talked about like selling tablature and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. He had a Patreon. We talked about getting a marketing list. Uh, uh, five years later, I'm happy to report back that I quit." <laughs> my full-time job oh, hey! Hey! Right on. i've put in my notice and april 1st will be my last day i'm finally take taking the leap to being a full-time solo creator still working on the same guitar project and i couldn't be more excited wow that's fantastic wow. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, so he's got a question yeah yeah my question any final pieces of advice for someone making the leap to full-time i feel like i've dotted all the usual eyes like health insurance six months of savings llc but i'm curious if there are any specific pieces of wisdom for someone in my shoes who's about to take this leap for the first time for example i should grow my monthly revenue to x before the end of the year or uh, uh, am I okay trusting my future self to figure this out? Uh, should I 
take this five years of momentum and and go with it? Do I should I trust that direction? Is there specific battle plans drawn up that is better and I should stick with that? Thanks for the advice over the years. Hoping to see y'all at the Founders Picnic in April. David Potts. Thank you, David. Um, I go ahead, Andrew. I I would start with uh, uh two things here on on the financial side. Um, six months of savings sounds like that's a good buffer but you know and and i see this sort of like in startup culture where like oh we got six months of funding and it's like cool but you know like that doesn't mean you get to wait till your your month five to try to raise more and yeah and i'm i'm very much like increase that one try to increase that buffer like try to get to a year you know i even say if you're going to be an independent creative get to a year or two years and the reason i say this is you are in a field that we don't know how quickly it could be disrupted. So if YouTube all of a sudden changed its algorithm and how things worked or the attention you get, you might spend a year trying to figure out what the next thing is and also in uncertain economic times. So I would step one and say, like, make that buffer bigger just because of how crazy things are going. Uh, second one is maybe you mentioned in here. I don't I remember is I don't know if you mentioned. um what your like savings for retirement is and that's sort of kind of there's your buffer but there's also what you're trying to put away and that's a big 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 thing because well say this again i'll keep repeating it when you're 20 years old people don't think you're you're not 20 anymore but when you're 20 years old you think about like okay i'll start someday what matters more what really ma and this is an economist would argue with me, but I will argue from a human point of view, what matters most is the habit, not the amount. The habit matters. If every month you have the habit of putting away money, $2, $5, $10, whatever, when you start to get more income, you are going to want to, you'll feel inclined to increase that and you're going to find out one day you've saved a lot. If you never develop that habit, the hardest time to develop that habit is when things are at its most dire. Because we talk to people who are like, ah, oh, I'm struggling with bills and stuff like that. We should start saving. I can't save right now because of this. Like, it's like saying I can't exercise or lose weight because I'm too sick. It's like, no, like you're, this is the thing to solve it for the next time happening. So this is just general advice. Start that habit, putting money away for retirement, putting money away, thinking, so, yeah. but that's great. Overall, just thrilled to see what's going on. So that's my advice. Increase your buffer. Uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, the buffer thing is, man, that is some real talk because, uh, I have found that I don't think too good when I am distracted by thinking about money. But when there's a pile of cash, I think very clearly about where trends are going, where opportunities lie, where, um, uh, like for example, you know, to, uh, 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 let's say let's say things were financially tighter than than they already are. Um, <clears throat> I might question whether or not uh, uh, Justin and I running off to Las Vegas to go do a presser tour where we did four appearances on podcasts uh, and then also had two creative meetings uh, uh, with prospective stuff. Like th this is all expansive opportunities that only were on the menu of possibility because uh, of, of that habit of, 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 Kind of two things. Uh, uh, first of all, for the retirement, I can't speak to that highly enough. Um, if you set aside 10% of every dollars you ever touch for the rest of your life, it is very, 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 very difficult to die poor. Uh, uh, on top of that, you should, um, uh, I, I, I don't care what the current interest or inflations are or whatever, um, you think smarter when you open your bank account and there's a pile of cash there. Uh, 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 now knowing those are tactical things, not, not maximizing your strategy. Uh, congratulations. You no longer work a job you hate where you have to scrimp and save and think about how am I going to exit this all day, every day while phoning in your day job, you now work for you. And so as a result, you need to make sure the U engine is at maximum capacity and having cash on hand for opportunities that will surprise you, will help out tremendously. Having peace of mind of knowing that it's almost impossible for you to die poor uh, is, is also going to help out tremendously. 
Um, now, uh, and uh, the third thing I'll add to that is think of your attention as a portfolio. Uh, when it comes to an investment portfolio, uh, oftentimes they'll say like um, uh, 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 domestic high risk, domestic low risk, you know, blue chips, uh, international and um, uh, uh, I don't know, bonds or whatever. Uh, uh, and then every, every few years kind of rebalance that. Uh, even as you do the primary thing that you do, figure out excuses to try closely related uh, peripheral things because, f uh, for example, uh, a live event, a live workshop, a, a, a you know a live get together or whatever, um, a book. Uh, I, I I don't know. I can't remember all of the things that you're doing, but 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 try stuff that is speculative, because again, uh, we we just talked about like it was highly speculative to uh, like well what if what if the scam school guy just was in a garage teaching magic to his daughter. Uh, turns out, pretty good deal. We're, we're on Disney Plus now. Uh, never in a million years would have thought of that. But, but uh, do those speculative things and make that part of your overall strategy. You should always be doing the primary thing that you know works, but you should all also have some percentage of your time dedicated to crazy projects that may or may not pay off. The only thing I would add to that, <clears throat> uh, great advice, uh, uh, is especially as you're transitioning out from being an employee of somebody else as well as uh, uh, your own creator, uh, do your best to establish habits and schedule for yourself. Um, it is very easy to go from a structured environment to an environment that you dictate and get lost in the morass of freedom, uh, of the more that you are sleeping at the same time, eating at the same time, working at the same time, uh, uh, the more you are going to benefit yourself. And I think initially, when you transition out of, uh, of working a nine to five, the, the, the excitement is that it's spring break every day and you can do whatever you want. You can say it whenever you want and you can. And some people work really, really well like that. What I've found, especially if you are trying to churn out regular content, is that the, the problems that we've had in the past at nine to five jobs is not the schedule, even nine to five, right? It is that you don't like the work. If you like the work, make, carving the time and the energy out for it is extraordinarily helpful. At least I have found it to be extraordinarily helpful. And it has only kind of led to more healthy decisions for my life to be able to say, I'm going to get to sleep at this amount of time. I'm going to get to sleep at this time. I'm going to wake up at this time. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z as soon as I wake up. And then I'm going to carve out X amount of time where I am recording, where I'm interviewing, where I need to be, you know, in, in various different places. But I would say that took me about six months to figure out uh, uh, leading up to that. It was just like, whatever, like, uh, uh, because you, you can fly the spaceship wherever you want now. And, and it's really cool. But ultimately I would say that that would be my advice. As far as a plan, you mentioned the question of like, what should you be thinking about as far as growth? Growth is absolutely great. Like yeah, really get analytical, like really the thing that I've, I found is that successful companies and enterprises, try to be extremely self-aware and they, they don't just go, Hey, we got 10 new people this month. Cool. They try to track it down, ask people. And sometimes you get to know surveys, but you could even, you could even go as far as like, Hey, I'm going to, I want to talk to 10 of these people on Google meet and find out a bit more about who they are, why they are, why they're subscribing to me, why they're supporters, why they're fans, because that'll help you find new ones. And you might find some new insight or something. It might be like, oh yeah, no, I just found you on YouTube. Or it might be like, oh, a friend recommended me to you. And you're like, okay, how do I make that easier? How do I make it really easier for somebody to recommend me to somebody else or spot that? Because it's, it's amazing sometimes. Like I had an example of, I'm going to be vague, but I was working someplace and they're like, we need to reach these kind of people. And we'd spoken to one of the people's higher up and they're like, uh, yeah, offhand, I don't know anybody. And I'm like, yeah, but they're really good friends with so-and-so who knows a thousand of them. And they're like, oh yeah, right. And went back, like, could you ask them to ask? And the next thing you know, 
problem solved because that was the sort of thing as we sometimes think of like, oh, how would I solve the problem? How would somebody else solve the problem? So when you look at like your customers and like, okay, how do I empower my customers to find me more customers? You need to talk to them and they may not have the answer directly, but they might tell you a thing. You go, aha, you know, why, why did you, why did you decide? Oh, my friend sent me a video of a song they played and I was so impressed. I wanted to learn. And so that might be like, oh, so maybe I need to have ask have a competition where they're all making songs based on what i taught them and then i support and they ask their friends to go vote for it and by proxy see about what i have anyhow yeah. think about growth think about also like ask yourself what if the way i'm doing things ends tomorrow what if this does not work what is my strategy when when i was spending my time getting into tv and you know i'd spent a considerable amount of effort on my pilot for my a and e show you know, you're at the point, you don't know if this is going to go. And also like, you know, like in my case, there's only going to be one season. Like that might be it. And it had to be like, what's the next? What do I do next? What do I do while that's on? It's cool, make money and I get these opportunities. But if that ends, it probably would. What will I be doing next? And so I think that's the thing to think about here is like, what, don't come up with plan B, you know, while you're trying to find your parachute. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, uh, keep, keep asking people for advice and keep, uh, uh, asking around for for new perspectives and new ideas because yeah you you never know when something you had never thought of or two just you know two tangent thoughts that you had never put together you, you never know when you'll find the thing that you know you you don't know you, you know uh, more more eyes is is better than 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 fewer so um you know not to say go and get a million partners and and whatnot but you know ask around other people and see the advice that you hear and. Uh, listen to especially anything that sounds counterintuitive or something that sounds like bad advice because you never know what what yeah. you're missing you know and i and i had to it too it's like the when you become a student of somebody else's success it's really important to try to get to the real reality to why there really was a success there versus like and i brought this up i brought up this example for there's a woman who does a tiktok channel called miss excel and she teaches people how to use TikTok. And if you just read the headline, you know, you hear, oh, this woman makes half a million dollars or whatever on, you know, on TikTok doing, you know, how to use Excel, which is completely not true. That is not true at all. She uses TikTok to advertise her courses yeah. on Excel. And she makes great courses. And the difference is, is she has a product that she sells. And I have, I have a, we have a friend of the family who's a very smart guy, very capable guy, pretty successful guy who is encouraging his granddaughter to become a professional video gamer because he heard they make lots of money. And I'm like, this guy has no grasp of the reality of that, understanding like, yes, your competition is, oh, every other teenager on the planet and the number that actually make money and how they make it. And it was sort of a weird thing. I'm like, but he read a headline. Well, I guess there's money in this. And people are like, oh, I guess there's money in YouTube. And it's like, well... Yes and no, and that's the thing. Is, and study that. So, like that, Miss Excel, like does what this, you know, this our, our our friend here does is, you know, actually knows the money's in selling the tutorials which they're doing. And that's the thing for other people listening is like, find out what really the money is. Where is the money really coming from? And it's often people just read the headline and don't get past it because it turns into something that's not true. Yeah, I I, I guess uh, as a, a final uh, word of warning. Um, <clears throat> Uh, make an honest assessment of how much of your current success is dependent on one platform. And if mm. that number makes you uncomfortable, be, you don't have to freak out. You don't have to overcorrect, but begin a plan to diversify because uh, if you get diversified enough, you're, you're, in, you're unstoppable. Yeah. And, Cause, and cause it, it looks like he's, he's primarily making money on the Patreon and then selling notes off his website. A, uh, I believe that's more or less how it works. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and I would say like, but what's his funnel? Uh, YouTube. his YouTube. Yeah. Cause he does YouTube yeah. videos. About it. Yeah. Right. So maybe, um, but, but, but so, but no, or, go ahead uh, but on, on to piggyback on that advice, Brian, like I, I agree that diversification is important. You should be ready to diversify where your platforms are. I also think, think that there are a lot of times especially for small outfits where uh focusing on on a platform can be more efficient in the immediate sense and that you can set yourself up for success 
if something happens. So if that means, yes, you are only putting your stuff on YouTube right now because it's the only YouTube, that's the only video platform. Well, you should at least keep track of the videos that you've made and if things like the metadata for them so that should you need to, hey, if YouTube turns off one day, great. I've got this spreadsheet here of all of the videos. I've got all my files ready. I can throw them onto YouTube 2 or Vimeo or whatever the next thing is. Right. Um, and so even then, it, and so not necessarily diversify and have eight accounts and hit every social media right now, but be ready to move if you need to, because that's that's where people get stuck with when these platforms fail. It's not that, oh, I have to change. It's that I wasn't ready to, and now you're spending all of this time getting ready to set up and then print, like at least be ready to own, you know, to know what you've got. Because if it goes away, you're going to be like, oh, shoot, I lost all of those descriptions. I lost all of those titles or, or what have you. Right. And that stuff adds up, especially in the content game. The uh, uh, thought just occurred to me that part of that uh, speculative investment um, uh, budget of your time and energy can involve not only, you know, like uh, parallel platforms, you know, like, uh, well, let me let me dabble in TikTok or whatever, but it could be seemingly outrageous stuff like uh, maybe uh, maybe consider uh, reaching out to your local news channel and say, hey, I could teach your weatherman how to play this uh, this song and uh, I could do it in five minutes. It'll look like this. Uh, here's the video. That's the proof of it. Uh, it'll be a fun segment. And, uh, if, and then, you know, for all, you know, if, if, I, maybe it goes nowhere, uh, at the very least you get the experience and you learn how a different platform works. Could be the kind of thing where all of a sudden every Thursday, once a month, you're the guy that's going to teach the weatherman how to play a song or whatever. Yeah. And, and that, that will have real value if there's ever an earthquake to your, your, your current flow. And there are, there are people out there looking for those types of you know, I need to put somebody on our TV station in the afternoon and it's going to be somebody. Um, so there are people out there who need this kind of content. And I feel like a good number of uh, a good amount of the work that like uh, an, an agent or a manager or someone who would be out there to get you get you work for that. That's where they would start is say, I got this thing. Do you need anything? Um, and so don't don't feel uh you know, self-conscious about asking, like there are people looking for this, like that, this, that's, that's the kind of thing that, yeah, uh, is out there. On the subject of like platforms and depending upon them, um, take a look at the stock symbol for Vimeo over the last five years. Vimeo just had a shakeup last week or whatever, where they've been telling some other high volume people like, Hey, we need you to pay us now to host your videos and it changed considerably. And so go to the five year. Uh, give me some. So we go to the, ooh, that's oh, uh, trending dear. down quite a lot. That is, uh, it had been about, what have we got? About about 57 US dollars in 2021. Uh, yeah, down to, down to $12.56. Goodness. And that's. So <laughs> Vimeo is a great platform. I mean, they're, it's smooth, well run. I mean, it's, I like using the interface. I think it's easy to embed. I've liked Vimeo. Vimeo has a profit problem. They were one where they're going to be this alternative to YouTube and going through the identity crisis. And some people, artists and stuff, use Vimeo as a portfolio for putting things out there because it was this this more elegant, classy way to do this. And you also have more but control, got- and you can literally see every single time uh, somebody views a thing. Like like you you can yep. uh, when you send out an email to let's say ABC with your pilot for whatever, you you can real time watch how many people at abc are watching your video and where the traffic's coming from yeah yeah and i i'm not gonna say oh well they should have done this or should have that i have no idea but they're in a dire situation where they're now having to change their structure and stuff about bandwidth higher people getting more because they're not really ad based not that much to an extent other than like promoting other stuff within so have to change their model and if you built your platform around vimeo and the fact that it was so easy to have people watch your videos and now you're being told you got to pay x number of thousands of dollars yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you know i think the big lesson on this vimeo thing is is like just rip the band-aid off like look i like vimeo seems like a great service it seems like it's done a lot of good for people but if it's not working 
if you need to go instead of to consumers, if you need to go to enterprise, if you need to go to business or something, just do it. Because this whole mess of like, we're going to look at the top 1% of users and make them pay and we won't tell it. And then, but oh, now, but now you get a two, now it's two terabyte. Like, like if, if it's not, if, if you can't make it work, then, then you should then re-examine it. Um, that's, that's my take on those Vimeo things I mean, like I mean, they should just go enterprise and just shut it down because it sounds like they can't make it work the way it was or with this new policy I mean, to be honest uh i pay money to vimeo i do not pay money to youtube for one reason uh i have a lot of video tutorials that i simply want to password protect i want to be able to sell a, t- a 20 minute tutorial mm. and then when you, the thing you buy is a card with a password on it and uh, uh youtube has no way to make that happen yeah um. yeah if vimeo had because they had people who are paying 200 dollars a month a year or whatever plans and then now that vimeo is going after them for bandwidth they're like being told like oh it'll be eight thousand dollars a year mm-hmm. um and, so and for that's... low tra- low traffic stuff too you know like part of part of vimeo's whole thing is that they have a higher data bit rate they look the, the videos look better but you're being charged for the bandwidth now, so they're gonna they're gonna get you going both ways. Yeah, that's you have crazy. people who are like posting like Patreon content on there and and other stuff, and that's been it's a kerfuffle. It's it's, it's and it's you know that, a thing that can't go on forever won't. And I think and I get you know the in Vimeo like we want to focus we, we're B two B not into YouTube or whatever. Like cool, can I tell you guys how you advertise yourself the last several yeah, years? Because right? it was kind of yeah. It's like, yeah, you are, you are B2B with people that got on your platform because they needed this, like exactly the use cases that Brian was, was, was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So rough situation. And that's just a tale, like the point of like platforms, things like this, your content you create too, like, uh, don't make YouTube the only place that you have those videos too. download that stuff, have that stuff elsewhere. And YouTube is a pretty steady platform. I wouldn't worry too much, but if you have an entire library of content that makes you money, if the only place that exists is on YouTube, you're beholden to a number of things that maybe you shouldn't be. Yeah. And you know, you know, if if you're like me and you remember when like you could just download your videos from YouTube if they were your own videos, that like you it's gone. You can only do it, uh, it. Last I checked, you could do it a couple of times a day. I don't even think you could do that. Uh, and even the, you know, and even like, then it's compressed and right. Awful. The, the YouTube da- like we upload our videos in 4K. If you use like a YouTube downloader or something, their 4K is a different codec. So you'd have to download the video and then mix it with the audio. And then like it's a whole thing. So it it's not even a place you locally can store. safe. Yeah. Locally safe. Keep keep an archive of your master. And I'm sure. I'm I'm sure David's doing all of this stuff, but anybody listening as well. There you go. Yeah. yeah, and the upside is it's it's storage is super cheap now, super super cheap, and you can do things too if you're a little technically inclined. Uh, like Amazon has different tiers of storage, and and one of the things that some of these video companies do too is that they're not paying for the regular; they will use another one of these called like Nearline or whatever, which means things that don't get requested very often. Because like you know, sometimes you go to click a video, and it takes like ten seconds for the thing to play. It's because that was in a different storage tier. And then it's making that request. Like, I got it. Hold on. I'll get it for you. Just wait. We'll be there. And um, so there's just a lot. It's cheap now. When we started, when we all started doing video, the idea of storing like hundreds of hours of HD video online would yeah. be like crazy talk. Now, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I will say, play. I mean, I, uh, uh, yeah, it does look like, um, the way that David's website is set up, he does have Patreon, but Patreon has a thing where you can have people authenticate with Patreon. I, I believe that's what what David's got. So he's got the system, the Patreon system, where people can put in money. But he's also got his website where he keeps the data and the content, which is very smart and is is technically involved, but is a is a very smart idea because if Patreon goes kaput, I'm sure he can either roll his own thing or hook into another service and yeah. that's 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 the that's the preparation that we're talking oh about. yeah always download your mailing list yes. from from patreon just yeah. keep a keep a rolling download of yeah. we did well, it gentlemen. we solved it yeah. any any picks 
uh, 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 my pick is Cord Killers, which is coming up in three hours, and I have a lot of stuff to prepare for. <laughs> Uh yeah, my my pick is March Madness basketball. Gambling. <laughs> Man, we were gambling a lot. That was a good time. Uh yeah. I'll 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 double down on both of those. Courtkillers.com and the NCAA March Madness. There we go. <laughs> I pick The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. It is a old, 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 dusty old book, but it is the foundations of investing and the idea of investing in the value of a company and not on where Mr. Market is going. So. Oh, right on. Oh, that's good. There you go. That's an actual good pick. <laughs> <laughs> you should have gone first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I literally, I was <laughs> listening to my parents on the phone, and my wife is with me, and my dad starts explaining his March Madness picks, or his what is his his Mar- you know, explaining his his into not his March picks, but he's explaining you know the, what he was his bracket, you know the sports stuff he's. Yeah, or not as Bragg, but who is just following. Whatnot. Yeah. And uh, she fell asleep. <laughs> It'll happen. Yeah. Bryce, cut that part out because I realized <laughs> that could be used for divorce. <laughs> so cut that part out. Cut that part out. We'll put a, we'll put a long Please. bleep section over. Yeah. Okay, we'll get... I beg you. I beg you. And let me just say, it's been after. Hey. Just, just take that part out. <laughs> You all listening live, totally cool. You heard that, but can, can you give me a clean? It's been after just. In case. It's been after. Hey, there we go. All right, fabulous stuff, everybody. Beautiful. All right, all right now we got to figure out how to get Justin home and get me prepped for cord killers. Do, uh, do we have a guest? Uh, I don't. I, I don't believe we will. Okay. Um, there was some confusion, but I don't believe that we will. All right. Alrighty, everybody. Well, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Check us out next time, later today, tomorrow, next week, all the good stuff. Bye-bye. I I think I got to share with you all after this. Okay, Uh, cool. cool.